Welcome YouTubers. Please press the subscribe button and please press the like button. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Henry and I will be your host today. And one of the things that we want to understand is continue that Jesus says in John 5:39 that to search the scriptures because it reveals of him. But in those days of, of the time of Jesus walking on earth, there was no New Testament. So the only scriptures that we can find him and understand who he really is, is the Old Testament. And in John 1.18, the Gospel of John, it says, no man has seen God but the Son. But yet, throughout all the Old Testament, God appears unto mankind. And these are the scriptures that we're going to be going over and show that this God that roams on earth and appears unto mankind is Jesus. Since no man has seen God the Father, the only alternative is that they are seeing God the Son. And as we continue, please watch our other videos because our other videos give you information leading up to this point. And we're going to be going over from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelations. So every video has important information. And please, please go back and review those other videos and like the videos. Thank you. In Genesis 26, 2, the Lord appeared unto Isaac, and Lord tells him to go and dwell in Egypt because of a famine. The key word here is appear. Every time that, that the Lord God appears unto them, he appears in, in the body just like yours and ours, and <clears throat> we could touch him, we could see him, and he eats. And so every time you see that in the Bible, you, you know that it's Jesus, because no man has seen God the Father, okay? This is just another example of how Jesus appears unto mankind. And, and, and as we continue, we wonder, what was Jesus doing when he was roaming on the earth, walking all over the place, you know, he went and he uh, uh, took Enoch because Enoch was a righteous man. And, and then he, you know, went to Noah because, you know, he, he, he forgave Noah by the grace of God. But Noah was also a righteous man. And, and then he goes and he appears unto Abraham because why? What was Jesus doing during this time when he was roaming on earth? Well, that's a good question. I always thought about that, but I, I got answered. So in Genesis 26, 5, it says, Because Abraham obeyed my voice. Have you ever heard that phrase, obey my voice, in the New Testament? When Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. Well, here we go. This is where it comes from. Okay. And he kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. You know, <clears throat> one of the things that I ask myself is in Genesis 26, 5, here you go, Abraham has God's commandments. But I thought that God didn't give mankind or, or, or the house of Israel his laws and his commandments until he gave them to Moses on the mountain. And here you are over a thousand years and Abraham is keeping the commandments. So we see what Jesus was doing during the time 
of him roaming on earth, going from village to village. He was teaching mankind or, 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 or his chosen how to live, what he wanted them to do, how he wanted them to live, and, you know, what they were supposed to obey. This is how Jesus knows if you follow him, because this is how he chose these people, because these people followed him. And then we come to Genesis 32, 24 through 30. This is where in Jacob, later on, he gets his name changed to Israel. This is when Jacob, he, um, he starts to return back to his family after he uh, married his wives and he was returning home with his family, his servants, his sheep, his goats. And he uh, had to face his brother. And his brother was mad because oh, of his birthright, that he sold his birthright to, to Jacob. And Jacob was scared. He was scared. And Jacob thought that his brother was going to kill him. So Jacob sends his servants ahead with a gift to Jacob, to his brother. And that night, before his brother uh, was to reach him, Jacob, he uh, crosses a river. And he goes and tries to go into prayer. But a man comes out of nowhere, and, and Jacob, he, uh, he calls out to this man. And this man, uh, uh, Jacob, he starts to grab him. And then they start to wrestle. And, and the man, he cheats. He puts his finger in Jacob's socket, and he dislocates his leg. He cheats. So then Jacob calls him Lord, and he asks for a blessing. And we see here that he calls him Lord and God. This man can only be Jesus that wrestled with him. As, as we can touch each other, this is how Jacob was touching Jesus. He could feel him, you know, the, 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 the wrestling part was uh, Jacob was a strong man and he would not let go. He would not let go of Jesus, knowing that this man was God. And this is the way we need to be. Don't let go of Jesus. Cling unto him. You know, to, in today's world, we see that so much is happening in today's world. There's a lot of people out there that are really great at prophesizing. And they can tell you where we're at in Scripture. But the truth is, is that if you follow these people, you're going to lose track. And you're going to be focused so much on what they're saying that you're going to um, find yourself not doing the things that you need to be doing for salvation. So we need to be able to focus on Jesus. Now, a lot of people go and say, well, you know, it's the New Testament, Jesus. Well, you know, everything from the New Testament comes out of the Old Testament. People say that everything in the New Testament is new. No, nothing is new in the New Testament. Jesus is just repeating everything that he did in the Old Testament. So we need to find those meanings of these words in the Old Testament, like obey my voice. So it says right there, that Jesus was talking to uh, Abraham 
and and obeyed my voice, meaning, well, you know, I would talk to him and I would teach him and, you know, he would obey what I would tell him. That's what obeyed my voice was. So he says, well, it, he kept my commandments, my laws, my statutes. He, you know, he, 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 he was over there saying to everyone, well, this man does everything I tell him. This is why he's a righteous man. This is why I picked him. I know that, that his family, they're all going to do what I've been teaching them because he does them and he's going to make sure that his family does it and all his descendants do it. This is what he knew about Abraham. And then we have Genesis 35, 9 through 13. Here we go again. Jesus appears unto Jacob and changes his name. And he tells him, I am the almighty God. A nation and a company of nations and kings shall come out of your loins. And that God, and that he was the God of Abraham Isaac Abraham and Isaac so we know that if we go back to those stories of Abraham and Isaac that the God that, that appeared unto them was Jesus and the reason why it was Jesus is because he appeared unto them you know when Abraham rose from the tent and he ran to those men well, the reason that he ran to those men was because he recognized them. He had talked to them numerous times, and that's why he ran up to them. He could see them, and he could feel them, and he wanted them to, to come and wash their feet and eat. So we know that, that, that the God that Abraham would see walked on earth and it couldn't be God the Father because he saw him. He ran up to him. They ate together. So this was Jesus. So the God that, that, that's here telling him that he is the almighty God of Abraham and Isaac. Well, we know that it was Jesus because he appeared unto them. So this is why we we can see and find we have to find these words that show us that it's Jesus and appeared is a key word that we have to use to understand that it's Jesus and here is another great one Exodus chapter 3 1 through 6 and it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto Moses in a burning bush. This is another name that is used in the Bible that we will be seeing again and again and again. And they call him the angel of the Lord. And this is Jesus. Because Moses, when he sees uh, God, the angel of the Lord, that appears in the burning bush, he knows that it's God. He knows. And he calls him Lord. And Jesus calls out to him, Moses, Moses, Moses. And he tells him, take off your shoes because the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. And Jesus wants to send him back to Egypt to a place that they wanted to kill him. And Moses was like, oh, well, you know, uh, uh, they, they wanted to kill me over there. And, um, you know, Jesus tells him, don't worry, don't worry. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of everything. All I want you to do is go back. Tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. So... Moses is kind of really school. He's, he's, 
he talks to him and he, and he haggles with him, you know, he haggles with him and he says, well, how am I going to know? How are those people going to know that I talk to God? Me of all people. How am I going to know? And he says, well, you know, take this staff. And then he tells him to put his hand in his coat pocket and he says, take it out. He says, well, you know, it was full of leprosy. He says, well, put it back in there again and take it out again. Oh, it's, it's healed. And so we know that this is Jesus that's appearing unto mankind. And we wanted to know what is Jesus doing on earth and what is he teaching mankind? And what are we supposed to learn from this? Well, you know, we, we have some very good scriptures that are gonna be coming up in future lessons here pretty soon. But we can see by Genesis 26, five, that Abraham had the commandments over a thousand years before God gave him to Moses on the mountain. So Jesus must have been teaching from the very, very beginning, commandments and laws. And this is what we can see because the scriptures are there. And this is what we need to understand what Jesus is teaching them because we need to be like them. We need to be the descendants of them that they taught as a descendants. And if we want to be with Jesus, on Jesus' side, to know what we need to do to be saved. Now I know a lot of people are gonna say, hey, 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 Henry, Colossians 5. I understand. But we're gonna be covering that and why that applies to uh, something a little bit different than what you think. But we'll be covering that. And for today, we'll end it right here. And we're going to continue on the next video so please subscribe and like this video and shalom to everyone. Thank you.